I want to be crystal clear on this point right up front. If you can get what you need using out-of-the-box Microsoft Excel data visualizations, I'll be the first person to tell you that's what you should do. However, if you move into advanced analytics and you need more power, unfortunately, there reaches a point where Microsoft Excel data visualizations that come out of the box, charts and pivot charts, quite frankly, they just don't get the job done. You need the ability to slice and dice your visualizations by multiple features simultaneously, and Excel just was never set up to do that very well. That's why I'm so excited to tell you that Microsoft has added the mighty Plot9 library to Python and Excel. Plot9 quite simply is awesome. It is my go-to data visualization library for my corporate training courses that I give. It's what I use in my consulting practice as a machine learning part, uh, practitioner. It is the real world stuff. And I'm so stoked if you can't tell that Microsoft actually put it in. I actually asked them for it and they delivered. It's awesome. So this video is all about showing you how to use Plot9 to get started with analyzing your data visually in a really, really super powerful way. And if you're interested, by the way, I have a dedicated tutorial on my channel. I'll put a card up here to this video. Don't worry that the that the video doesn't use Excel because Plot9 code is Plot9 code, whether you use Jupyter Notebooks or VS Code or Python and Excel. The shell that you use doesn't matter. The Python code is exactly the same. So you can check that out if you like what you see in this video. So let's go ahead and get started and let me show you why Plot9 is so awesome. So here I am in the Excel workbook for this particular video. If you want to follow along with what I'm doing, you can get this workbook down below the video in the description. There's a link to where you can give me your email address and I will send you a copy of this workbook. So feel free to pause the video if you'd like to follow along. Otherwise, I'm just going to go ahead and dive right in. So for this video, I'm going to use the famous Titanic training data set. Now, in the data science community, there are people that absolutely detest this data set. I'm not one of them. I think it's a great teaching vehicle for this particular reason. It simulates so many real world machine learning scenarios. Because what we have going on here is a data set where every row is an item of business interest. In this particular case, it happens to be passengers on the Titanic. And the columns are the characteristics, the attributes, or the features of those things. And what we have here is a single column, which I've highlighted right here, that is our outcome of interest. And this pattern is everywhere in real world data science. It's in healthcare, it's in insurance, it's in banking, it's in government, it's everywhere. Let me give you a healthcare example. Your item of interest might be, for example, rows, where each one of the rows is a patient in your emergency room. And the outcome of interest might be whether or not each of these emergency room patients ended up being admitted to the hospital for more than a day or two, let's say. And that is a very, very powerful thing to find out. What are the characteristics? What are the features of these patients that indicate or are highly predictive of them being admitted to the hospital. So the Titanic data set is a great way to get started with machine learning and data science and also demonstrate the power of Plot9 to allow you to explore your data and try and figure out, hey, is there any signal in my data? Is it even worth trying to build a machine learning model? And by the way, what I'm going to show you in this video is the same exact stuff that I teach my machine learning clients with their own data sets. So we've got our data here as a Excel table. And let's go ahead and go over to the Python code. And what we can see here is I've already got some Python code. I'm not going to type it out for you because you can always get the workbook. So if I hit Control Shift U, I will expand the formula bar here. And you can see that in this particular cell, all I'm doing is loading up my Titanic train table from Excel, loading all the rows, all the columns, and then storing it in a pandas data frame in Python and Excel, which I'm calling Titanic underscore train. So if I hit Control Enter and run that, I can go ahead and Control Shift U. And then if I click on the card here, I can get a little preview of my data frame. And you can see here I have 891 rows and I have 12 columns. And it's just basically all the same data that we saw in the previous worksheet. Now, one of the things that we need to know about Plot9 is that it is pandas aware for lack of a better way of describing it. So it will actually pay attention to the data types of the pandas data frame columns and adjust the data visualizations appropriately. So one of the things that is good to do is to identify which of your columns, which of your features are categorical in your pandas data frame and explicitly denote them as categorical. And then Plot9 will treat them as such in data visualizations. Control Shift U, open this up again, and let's take a look at this guy right here. And what we can see here is I've got some code for transforming my various columns in my data frame to be categorical. So first up is P class. And P class in this data, in this data set denotes the class of ticket. 
first class ticket, second class ticket, third class ticket. And it's encoded as numbers, one, two, three. So by default, pandas considers that a numeric column, but in fact, it's not actually numeric, it's categorical. So what we're doing is we're making it category. And this will actually show up in the data visualizations automatically in plot nine. Plot nine will say, okay, well, P class isn't actually a number, it's actually a category, so I will react appropriately. There's also a column for the sexual designation, of the passenger, male or female. We're gonna go ahead and make those categorical. By the way, this strictly speaking isn't required because by default, Plot9 will treat strings as categories, but it doesn't hurt to be explicit with your data. And then lastly, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna transform the survived column, which is a binary indicator, one for the passenger survived and zero for they did not. And I'm just gonna replace those with the zeros with perished and ones with survived. And then technically I don't need to do this, but I'm just gonna be explicit and make them categories. So if I run this code, everything works out just fine. And then if I go down to this particular cell, you can see here that I'm gonna get the info because I'm gonna to prove to you that we've actually changed the nature of the column. And actually this is a good idea for you to do anyway. So if I run this code here, control enter, control shift U, and then let's open up the diagnostics pane. And what we can see here is category, category, category. This is good category, category to category. So we've actually changed the nature of those columns from numeric or object, which represents strings and pandas to actual categorical features, which is nice. Now, next up, we can start actually exploring our data with Plot9. And what I'm gonna show you is a progression, which illustrates how powerful Plot9 is and why you might wanna use it instead of out of the box Excel data visualizations for data science tasks, because you can actually build up very complex, very insightful data visualizations useful for exploring data science questions. Okay, so first up, let's take a look at this code here, Control Shift U. And what I'm doing here is I'm building a multivariate histogram. Now, a histogram is typically used for a single column of numbers to show you the distribution. So we're gonna be looking at the age feature, the age column of the Titanic data set in this code. And not surprisingly, that's the age of the passenger. And we, we can look at it as we can say, hey, are most of the passengers young? Are most of the passengers old? Are they in between? That sort of thing. That's what histograms are useful for. What's really awesome is that Plot9 allows you to overlay additional columns into the visualization. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna create a histogram of the age feature values from our data frame. And then we're gonna color code the bars of the histogram based on whether or not the folks in that particular age bin or age bucket of the histogram survived. And this is awesome. And once again, I'm not gonna drain all the Plot9 code because I've got a tutorial. Oop, there's a card up here <laughs> that you can click on to see my tutorial video on my channel for this. So let's just go ahead and run this real quick and see what's going on. So if I run this and control shift U, and then I can right click on the cell here and then picture and cell, create reference, boom. So I'm just gonna make this a little bit bigger so you can see it. And this is a histogram. This is a multivariate histogram because it's multivariate because we're actually looking at two columns or two variables simultaneously. So we're looking at age and then these color coding tells you in a particular age bin or age bucket here, how many folks perished and how many survived. So for example, look down here at the very low end of the range. So these are children on the Titanic and notice that their bars are mostly this turquoise color, which denotes survived, especially this bar right here. The vast majority of very, very young passengers on the Titanic survived. Compare that to this region over here, which is, I don't know, in the 70s around, let's say, around 70 or so. And this is all this coral color, this orange color, which means perished. So this is a great example of how you can start building up these visualizations to help you explore your data science questions. And once again, in our particular case here is, what are the features, what are the characteristics of the passengers that are highly associated or predictive of survival? And what we can see here is that it looks like age is predictive, at least in the low end. So there's this old adage, this old nautical tradition of women and children first, and maybe that's what we're seeing going on here, is that children were given priority on the lifeboats, potentially on the Titanic. So that's what this visualization, you know, it's not definitive, but it's kind of giving us some indication of what's going on here. So I'm gonna go ahead and control Z, control Z, control Z, get back to this. And let's go ahead and open up the formula bar again. We can expand upon this idea of a multivariate or multi-column visualization quite easy in Plot9. Because mostly what you do with Plot9, once you get good with it, is you just copy and paste the code, you tweak it, you add a little bit to it, and bam, you get a new visualization. And let me show you what I mean by that. So notice that this is our code right here. And then if I click on this particular cell, it's basically the same, except for I added this little tidbit right here. And this is 
what makes Plot9 so, so powerful, especially compared to out-of-the-box Microsoft Excel data visualizations. It's this idea of facets. And what I'm telling Plot9 is, is, hey, I want to create the same histogram that we saw previously, but I want you to create a histogram for each unique value of the sex feature. So I want to create a histogram for males and a histogram for females. And this is what's known as a facet wrap or a facet grid. And that's a bit abstract. So let me just go ahead and run this code for you. And then we can take a look at the visualization. Control Shift U, right click, picture and cell, create a reference, right? So it's exactly what we saw before, but now we have a histogram for females and a histogram for males. And notice what we got going on here. The previous histogram that we saw had two columns worth of information, age and survived. Now we have three columns of information, age, survived, and sex. And what we can see here is something that's really super important that we didn't get from the previous visualization. Notice that the female side is mostly turquoise. It's mostly survived. And the male side is the opposite. But once again, we're also noticing this trend that younger folks tend to survive. But we also see the females are tending to survive all across the age distribution. So once again, that nautical adage, that rule of thumb of women and children first seems to be playing out here. But we don't have to stop there. We can easily add even more features, more columns, more dimensions, more variables into our visualizations. We can do this quickly and easily, and we can scale far beyond what's possible with out-of-the-box Excel. And by the way, it actually does this way, way better than most other libraries in Python. So for example, there's the Seaborn library in Python. Plot9 is way better than the Seaborn, in my opinion, for this sort of analysis. So Control-Z, 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 and Control-Shift-U. And let's go ahead and see this guy right here. Now what I'm doing is I'm adding P-Class into the mix. So I'm saying, hey, create a histogram of age, color code the bars by survived, but then also create a unique histogram for every combination of sex and p-class. So I should get two, there's two values for sex and three values for p-class, so I should get a total of six histograms out of this. So if I run this code, I'm gonna click on the cell, run this code, control shift U, right click, create reference. Oh, <laughs> look at that. Yeah, this is when we start cooking with gas right here. Notice that we have our male and female as we saw before, our histograms, age along the x-axis, perished and survived, and then we have rows corresponding to the various values of p-class, one, two, and three. And this really starts to make things pop for us, right? So over here, what we can see is females in general tend to survive, most of the females survived, at least based on this data set, but notice that there is a big disparity between first and second class and third class, which unfortunately is not surprising, but um, maybe that's nothing more than just the fact that first and second class were closer to the top of the ship, so people were closer to the lifeboats. Maybe that's something going on there. But what we can see here is a stratification, if you will, of female survival. It's more prevalent in first and second class versus third class. And then if we go over on the male side, we can start seeing some really interesting patterns here, right? Once again, young males, boys in first and second class overwhelmingly survive in third class, unfortunately not so much. So this visualization is providing us even more information. And by the way, this is kind of how most machine learning algorithms end up working anyway, especially those that are most useful in real world machine learning, which are machine learning models based on decision trees. This is literally what goes on behind the scenes, right? They essentially partition up the data into like tiles like this, the easy way to think about it, squares like this. And they're like, okay, well, females in first class overwhelmingly survive no matter what their age is. And they'll create like a prediction based on that. So what you're, what you're learning here is how to explore your data in a very real way to determine whether or not you could even build a useful machine learning model. So, so, it's so powerful, so awesome. And by the way, I'm not paid to promote Plot9 in any shape or form. I just think it's awesome. And then lastly, we don't need to stop there, right? We can add even more goodness. Okay, we're going to actually add Embarked. And that's another categorical column that actually tells you which port did the passenger actually get on the Titanic. And they were boarding in Cherbourg, Southampton, and Queenstown. So there was three separate values. There's actually a couple missing values in this particular feature as well. And we'll see that in the visualization. But please notice that I didn't explicitly make the Embarked feature categorical, but since it's recognized as a string by pandas, Plot9 will automatically treat it as a categorical feature in the visualization. One of the things I'm doing here is because this, this visualization is getting kind of big, is I'm explicitly making it 12 inches wide and 6 inches tall, just so that we can actually see it pretty decently. 
And once again, not gonna drain the code. Check out my tutorial video here to learn more. All right, so let's run this. And then I'll take a second to run because it's a powerful visualization so it doesn't happen too quickly. Control Shift U, right click, picture and cell, create reference, boom. And here we go. So I can make this just a little bit bigger, but not too much. And notice what we got going on here. We've got all these different combinations. We have age, survived, P class, sex, and embarked. And we get these tiles. And what this allows us to do is just kind of sit back and just look at it and try and visually analyze, are there any patterns? And then once again, like I said, this actually mimics how machine learning algorithms like decision trees and algorithms based on decision trees really do learn, quote unquote, from the data. They do stuff like this. So it's a super powerful technique. And what we can see here is, well, not too surprisingly, P class one, these are all female columns right here. They're all overwhelming and turquoise, same here for second class. Gets to be more of a mixed bag here. And then what we can see is the males. And in general, what this visualization is telling me is there's a ton of signal in age. There's a ton of signal in P-class. There's a ton of signal in sex, but embarked, eh, maybe not so much. So if I was crafting a machine learning model, maybe using a decision tree or random forest or something like that, I might not necessarily start with the embarked feature right away because it doesn't seem to offer a lot in terms of signal. And this visualization tells me that. And there you have it. This is real world stuff. This is what I do when I do machine learning projects for my clients. This is what I do when I train people on how to do machine learning. I use the Plot9 library and teach them to create these faceted visualizations. It's powerful, powerful stuff. So here is the most excellent news. Plot9 is just one of many libraries that Microsoft just added to Python and Excel to increase its power, to make it so useful for real world data science tasks. My next video is gonna cover another one of these libraries that was recently added, the Natural Language Toolkit, or NLTK. NLTK, the NLTK is, <laughs> it's so good, it's so great. The NLTK is the de facto standard for doing real world text analytics using Python. And now that it's available in Python and Excel, this makes Microsoft Excel a perfect vehicle for doing real world text analytics. So I'm pretty stoked about that. The next video on the NLTK will show up on your screen here as a tile when it's ready. And I will also put up a tile here to that Plot9 video that I mentioned before, that Plot9 tutorial that I have on my channel. Okay, that's it for this video. And until next time, please stay healthy and wish you very happy data sleuthing.